It's not going to take much more now. Yeah, I think we've got that uh, pretty well heated right through. It's off. There we go, our last fastener. This is how clean it should come off if you do it right. I know there's i uh, I've seen a few videos now and one of my Patreon guys has kind of switched over to uh, the um, Nicadium wire and I get that. I, you know, I, I totally get that. It's just I, I've been doing this for close to a half a century so I'm, as you can see there was no issue getting this thing off. I'm very comfortable with uh, using the steamer and I think the part of the misinterpretation comes, I've seen a few videos online where I think one guy said, well you, you steam it for 10 minutes. I'm thinking, 10 minutes? I basically steamed it for, I think it was 30 seconds a side and then kind of went for a second round, about 20 seconds a side. And uh, again, it's kind of 99% preparation and 1% perspiration and then we'll correct this neck angle and Steve will be good for many years to come. So here's the base of that head block. There isn't a speck or a trace of any type of water or moisture or steam. So the point I'm making is if you do the job right with steam you're really only exposing the instrument to steam for a matter of seconds. The amount that we take off right here across that tip is going to determine the tilt of the neck and it's not very much. Got a nice slow rotation here. This is We're talking a matter of seconds here to get started. And now we'll switch over to hand sanding. Okay, I've got my tongue depressor sanding sticks that you've seen me make up in previous videos. I've got 120 grit on this side, 180 grit on this side. So I'm just going to just finesse that a little tiny bit. Start with the 120. Kind of checking that tape as we go. So I start with the 120 and then Flip that stick and finish up with a 180. Okay. Let's get it on the guitar, see what we got. So when you're doing a neck reset, there's six different planes that you need to check. So the reason we took the neck off was it was too far this way. So if you think back in the video, we took off the tip of the heel and then made our way up to the top of the heel, 
on the underside of the fingerboard, so we change from this angle to that angle. So there's two angles, one, two. The other angles that you got to watch are this angle and this angle. And I've got two pieces of tape about a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge of the ebony so that I can use that as my guide because if you go too far this way, the first string will run right off the neck. And of course, if you go too far the other way, well, the base string will be hanging out in midair. You should be able to line up the center of the bridge pin with the center of the slot in the nut on both sides. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm kind of eyeing that and very happy with that. So we kind of split the difference. So there's one plane, two planes, three planes, four planes, and then lastly, five and six. I've checked all those planes and I'm very happy with what we've got. Now when I put that 10 inch straight edge, which covers about a third of the fingerboard, you see that fall off there? Not everybody does this when they do a neck reset, but I do. Uh, I will remove the frets back to about the 7th fret, probably the 6th fret, so we don't get an extreme fall off on the fingerboard extension. This, what I'm aiming for is to get a uninterrupted straight trajectory from the 1st fret right to the last without getting that fall off. So there's two reasons for that. Number one is just the evenness of the playability from the 1st fret to the last. The second reason is the intonation, because if you get extreme fall off, then all of these top notes will intonate sharp in relation to the rest of the notes. So in the final analysis, we want the guitar to play perfectly in tune, smooth as silk, end to end. And that's the mission. That nut came out ultra clean. And I did pull those frets out back to about the seventh fret, and I thought, you know, I may as well do the whole fingerboard if I'm, there's only seven frets left. This gives you an idea of the fall off here. The other reason I pulled all the frets out is I want to have absolute total control from the leading edge of the nut right to the end of the fingerboard. I want that trajectory to be laser straight along the string path and of course we'll put some load on that truss rod so that we'll always be able to get relief in it. It's the six inch straight edge that is going to kind of tell the story. Okay, so obviously this area here is going to take the biggest hit and we'll start there with the smallest scrub block and then we'll gradually work our way back so that we get a beautiful transition from the top of the fingerboard right to the last fret. Well, seeing as we are in the Stanley Cup playoffs, I thought I'd bring you in for another hockey puck trick. So when I do a neck reset, I've got that big double rubber band that holds the heel in tight as I use my sandpaper and slip it along the intersection of the heel to side joint. So this gives me enough pressure to hold the heel in tight to the sides as I make those final adjustments. Now this is all ready to glue, but we're going to do the correction of the fingerboard and put the frets in first. Well, I'm very happy with that neck adjustment that we got all the way around, but before I go any further, I want to explain why I'm setting up on the workstation the way I'm setting up. So, the neck is held down at this end. The body is supported on the underside across the head block. The reason for that is I'm going to be pushing down to level this out. The neck is not glued on, so I've checked and verified all those previous angles that we discussed. So the first thing we're doing is taking care of the highest spot. So I've got my small scrub block, which is the smallest one that you get in your kit. I'm just concentrating on that high spot. And check it as I go. I did back off the truss rod. I do have some load on the truss rod, but I backed it off. It was quite tight. Check that as we go as well.
the final verification of the neck to body angle, which we have changed now, I put in what I call pilot frets, in this case the 4th fret and the 10th fret, and then put that straight edge up and slip to the bridge. So what I can see now is we'll come up quite a bit higher than that saddle that's in the bridge right now because it's pretty well bottomed out. And Steve will be able to put the action anywhere he wants it. I've got to clean out all those fret slots, make sure that they're there's no obstruction, no dust or anything in there. So this is the setup I use to back up that fingerboard extension when I'm driving frets in. I'm bringing you in close to show you the rough tolerance for the initial fret length. So here's a little bit of a different angle on the support for the fingerboard extension. Yes. We'll let that set up overnight, come back tomorrow, and then we'll be on to the next stage of the job. That is the amount of tang you want. If the tang is too long, there's a danger of pushing the, the binding off, or in this case, pushing that ebony strip out. I have checked all these slots over and over again, but I can't. I just want to make sure, once you drive that fret in, I don't want to have to pull it out and redo it. Just so you know, this is the procedure I've gone through for every single fret. Both sides cut it out, teed it, beveled it, and buffed it. Now we're ready to install.
I want to bring this down to 97. 97.5, this is the original Martin saddle press fit, 98.5, okay. So we want to reduce the thickness of the leg that goes into the slot in the bridge. We have 108, 98, oh, okay, we've arrived. This side is perfect. I just want to lean on this side a little bit. So I just wanted to show you this fit that I'm talking about. I can drop that leg in. It's a little snug, but I'm okay with that. We can touch it up later, both sides. So the thickness of the leg is done. Now to the next step. We're bringing the saddle down to its final length, but we're also rounding off the ends so that it drops into the slot. So this is the fit that we've got in that slot. I'm loving that. So now I'm going to put a relief cut on the underside of that saddle to conform with the shape of the bridge. So the ledge almost touches the curvature of the crown of the bridge. Okay, let's cut that radius. You can see we're seriously honing in now. So now it's just the A and the B string need to come back. Now, when I get to this stage and I'm this close, I leave the saddle in the slot, leave the strings on the guitar. I'll loosen off the B, I'm gonna do that right now, I'll loosen off that B string, pull out the pin, and I'll scrape the saddle back for that three thou. And that did it. B string is done. Okay, let's go to the A. Here we're moving that back four cents, not a lot. Let's try that. That'll do it. And these are the final values for the nut. The focal point for the low E string actually goes beyond the end of the fingerboard and into the body of the nut itself. Both the high E and B string were perfect right out of the gate, so they were not moved. The G, the D, and the A are all positive values. They cantilever over the end of the fingerboard. So the last thing to do is to file out the nut slots so that the open string and the first fret fretted note are in tune. Here's our compensated nut. That is the finished compensated saddle for the 12 to 53 at concert pitch. And I've just put a brand new set of strings on. This is actually third set of strings. Just tightening and loosening and tightening and loosening so many times. Anyway, it is silky smooth to play now. Let's have a listen. Thank mm -hmm. you.